Hey guys, just checking in with you guys. Um, I hope you all are doing well. As you can see, it's gloomy, rainy, but I don't let that stop me or my day. Um, I just wanted to pop in and kind of give some words of encouragement for those of you that are new notaries, just starting out in your business and kind of giving you some perspective as far as you know the income that you can earn in this business and what you kind of see and hear all over social media um, or the news or whatever um, just because there are some misconstrued things and I just feel like you know it's always a one it's always only one perspective or someone's really not giving a, a, a an ideal picture of the business or not even that they are really speaking on their personal experience and not really shining light on the bigger picture so when i began as a notary okay my intention was to gung-ho be a excellent five-star rated loan signing agent be a preferred notary for title companies lenders and investors so yes I absolutely accomplished that goal and that is why I still teach that to this day however okay being an entrepreneur being able to see the bigger picture I realized that hey there is a whole other realm of services that I can provide that are comparative or equal to income from loan signing okay so that is why I really got into teaching about notary business because most people when they hear notary and all of the six-figure success stories it's just a loan signing agent and that's simply not true you can definitely earn a um, substantial income doing other things besides just loan signing you can do things in addition to loan signing as well but I really want to take that like put that in your mind that you know to make money as a notary you do not have to only do loan signings okay and I'll talk a little bit about that I have um, experience with a few different areas that all together bring in well over six six figures in my notary business and it has been doing that for the past three years okay and it's not all just loan signing so first I'll start with loan signing and the reason why notaries make the fees that they make as a signing agent okay so the fees generally range from $85 to maybe 300 350 kind of depending on where you're at where you're getting the order from the type of loan signing it is and if you are going direct with the title company or you're getting the lead from a signing service okay all right so we are paid the high fee because of the service so now let me flip over to other avenues in notary that for me bring in equals amount equal amounts of money as loan signing um, or very comparative and then I also collaborate and work with and teach and talk to many other notaries that are doing big things in their niche in notary that I don't have expertise in and so I, I talk to them about it and kind of dig deep and see you know how they got there where they're going how's it going and um, and so I like to share these type of things. So the first one I want to talk about obviously is going to be a postille. If you have not at least researched a little bit about what a postille is and what an apostille agent or facilitator does, you might want to go ahead and get your pen and paper, go research and figure it out because it's highly comparative to loans. As an apostille agent, I'm not printing um, a bunch of documents. Uh, the wear and tear on my car is a lot less because I'm not going from appointment to appointment to appointment, okay? So the way an apostille works is if I'm doing it locally, I would meet with my customer, notarize their document, co collect their document, and then have it processed at my Secretary of State, okay? This is a simple process. The meeting alone with the customer is literally five or ten minutes, and I'm still getting paid uh, the same or if not more as a loan signing okay so I want you to put that into perspective a loan signing takes about 30 minutes to one hour I'm driving there I'm printing paper I'm buying toner okay I'm having to do a whole bunch of marketing which you have to do regardless but if you can see your return on investment is higher if you're doing a postille and that's only if you're doing local 
And so you can do this in other states as well. You can market, run ads for all of the other states as long as you have a process in place and you have uh, you understand the, what needs to happen uh, to get the document apostilled. Now, yes, I do recommend training. I Honestly, I have the training, but you can honestly get the training wherever you want, but you are going to want to dig deep and understand uh, what documents you can, can and cannot accept and what government authorities you need to um, take them to to get them processed. But once you learn that, it's a very easy and simple process. So for example, um, I'll just use today as an example. I have, I'm picking up two apostille orders, okay? I don't literally have to work the rest of the day. I have, in my mind, for my business, I have an amount that I want to make every single day in order to meet my goal. So I've met my goal with just the one apostille appointment, but I actually have two apostille appointments. Um, and so, you know, one's going to France, one's going to Mexico. It's a one page, one pager and still getting paid the same fee. Okay. And so on top of that, okay, I am also doing an I-9 employment verification for where I'm acting as the authorized representative for a company for their new hires. Okay, so that's another $65 that is only going to take me five minutes. And I'm actually here waiting right now uh, for him to, for our appointment to start. That's why I have time to make this video. I'm here a little bit early. Um, but the I-9 employment verification is another avenue or another service you can add to your, your business, guys. Um, honestly, you know, it was a no-brainer when they contacted me and contracted with me to to work with their company for their new hires it, okay so I didn't mean to backtrack there so but yes there's loan signing there's a postille which I would say is comparative or even uh, more lucrative than loan signing if you ask me it's just my opinion being in it doing it marketing for it how easy it is um, but you also can market for i9 working with employers um, for their new hires. All right, so let's go into the next niche that you can do or the next thing that you can do. It doesn't require a lot of time. You can market your services to places such as retirement homes, um, senior, uh, senior, senior centers, um, and um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Um, rehab centers, hospitals, things like that. They keep me busy as well. I go out there at least once a week to notarize power of attorneys, medical directives. All right, so they they constantly those documents constantly change, so they constantly need a notary, and they will pay for my services to come to them because most of them they don't want to leave their facility, they can't leave their facility, or they're immobile, and it's just the ease in and uh, convenience of it all for me coming to them. So, and I definitely don't mind. I, it's my favorite work to do is working in retirement homes, senior sitters, because they're all so sweet, and they always have good stories and want to feed me and all that good stuff. It's 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 a ball um, so I do want to that's just a few okay those are the ones I'm involved with I have done other things in the past but honestly my business is so busy I don't have time to do them but there are other ways you can make money in your notary business now why am I getting to these other services for those of you that are just in uh, in for loan signing or were just interested in loan signing so if you really got into this to make it a business and to deep dive and learn your market, you would know that loan signing, especially refinances, um, really uh, the amount of work is going to be determined by the real estate market. Okay, So if you got started in 2020 and 2021, then you are used to the the super, super duper crazy low interest rates at like two or three percent. And the loan signings were coming in and flowing and flowing and flowing. All right. So therefore, now that the market is changing and shifting and interest rates creep up, those refinances become uh, slimmer, 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 but they're still there. But your business is going to have to shift. If you are not going to be able to pivot and shift your business to what the market is saying, you may really want to get down and look at your business plan and reevaluate that, okay? So 
what happens for me in my business and many of my students refinances definitely decreased but they didn't go away especially if you are um if you are a direct uh, have a direct contract with a, a title company or lender and you're their go-to notary, then yes, your business pretty much still stayed the same. It might have decreased a little. But what I'm trying to get at is the shift, okay? Less refinances, but I guarantee you guys, go talk to your real estate friends, your realtors. People are still buying. People are still selling homes. People are still getting loan modifications. And those are still jobs that a signing agent can do. Okay, so that's the first pivot you have to think about. Okay, don't think about oh my gosh, refinances are are, are low. I guess I gotta go. You know, I'm, I'm done being a notary. So really, you need to start thinking about okay. Let me see. Do I need to network more with real estate agents, with investors who are purchasing property or selling property or investing in properties? They are going to need a notary every single time they make a deal, okay? If that's where you're at, you want a gung-ho stay with loan signing, okay? Um, so for me, I kept loan signing. Loan signing is still a huge part of my business because most of my clients are direct clients. And so they do use me about two to three days a week consistently. But again, I have diversified my business. Equal amount of money is coming in for my apostille side of my business, okay? So like early on when I began my business, I was I was always I'm always thinking about the bigger picture and I really hope that this resonates with somebody to always be thinking of the bigger picture. And in my mind, oh my gosh, if loan signing doesn't work out, I, if it doesn't if it's not what I like to do, if I don't even enjoy it, um how else am I going to sustain, you know, my lifestyle, pay my bills, pay my mortgage, pay my car note, blah blah blah. That is what urged me to make sure I did a full span of all the ways I could earn money as a notary. And then I picked the ones that fit me, fit my personality, fit my skill set, and that I would like to do. And that's how I came up with the, the, the set uh, services that are within my business. And so obviously they're the ones that make the most because I you know I want to get the most bang for my buck in my day but I'll, I enjoy my flexibility I enjoy not having to work when I don't want to if I want to take a self-care day or if I uh, want to go you know have lunch or spend half the day with my kids or whatever I want to do I enjoy that flexibility I also enjoy not having to work all day um, and I also enjoy not having to be going to loan signings from the morning up until five or four, for whatever time, going from signing, signing to signing to signing. That was never my um, that was never my plan or what I wanted to do. Now, did I grind it out and do that in my first year? Absolutely, because I needed to make those connections and, and network. But did I want to continue to do that? No, I, I diversified my business. I made sure I had some direct clients, but I also have other ways to earn money in my notary business, okay? Hopefully this doesn't sound like rambling to you, but trying to help you understand that if you are a business owner, it's very important to sit down and take a good good look at your business plan and just kind of see where you're headed, where you're going, where you want to be in the next five years. Now, if this is something that's just part-time side hustle, enough to pay off like, um, you know, some kind of debt or pay for a vacation, then go for it, you know, stick to the one thing. But if this is maybe something long-term, then you might want to think about how you can diversify uh, your your business, okay? So other avenues of income that you can look into, um, now I don't personally do all of these, but you know, they're very lucrative. I would say the next most lucrative um, niche as a notary would be wedding officiant, okay? Um, wedding officiants, you know, you can earn about $150 in five or 10 minutes, or you can earn three or $400 for one ceremony, and you're only there for what, 30 minutes. I'm actually working and doing a collaboration with uh, Sully Torres from New York on teaching um, how to build a wedding officiant business. So she's very successful in that. The other things that you can look into are digital court reporting, process serving. You can do specialty notary work where you're working specifically with attorneys to take care of their estate planning packages. 
Also, remote online notary is one of my new favorites. I've always had my remote online notary commission, but um, I just recently, maybe like seven months ago, started doing a lot more marketing for it. Before, I just had it and, you know, if you need it, it's there. And title companies did. I did closings remotely, but as far as like my own general notary work or, you know, bringing in my own clients, that has picked up in the last six months because I actually marketed for it. Um, again, if you don't market and tell people about the service, they're definitely not going to know it's available. So once I started doing that, the business came. And I really like it because I literally, if I've got two appointments, I don't leave my house and I can take care of their online notary appointment like within 15 or 20 minutes. It's really wonderful. Um, so I might, you know, continue to market for that and um, market strong for that. Now, if you're wanting to really expand and scale your business, what I have done and what many other notaries do is we hire other notaries to do a lot of the work that comes into the business. Because like I said, I've worked hard and grinded and marketed and basically put my footsteps all over my community. And so when someone calls us for a notary appointment, I cannot be everywhere at one time. So honestly, I... Um, I contract other notaries out to do the jobs for me or for the business, not for me, but for my business and company. So I pay them majority of the fee and I take a little bit of cut because honestly, I got the lead. Um, I'm not going to say I'm a signing service, but it acts in a similar way. So I do hire other notaries in my community to go out and do general notary work appointments, pick up apostille documents, things like that, um, so that I can still run my business and, and get even a wide span, a wider span of um, customer. The reason I decided to go ahead and start uh, contracting other notaries to do the work is because um, I'm super busy, obviously, as a mom and as a signing agent running the notary business. So I had to step back a little bit because I also do the training and the education portion of a notary so that you can be properly informed and trained on how to be a successful notary business owner. I do not promote my business as you're going to be a loan signing agent rather than I'm trying to build you up to be a successful business owner that provides notary services. So that takes up time as well. And so in order for me to do that properly and make sure I'm giving my best to that, I had to um, scale the notary part and give the jobs to someone else. Okay. So what I do in my notary academy is you guys, you know, you expect so much of me. I'm kidding. Uh, but no, I have mentorship where I meet and, and I teach live twice a week uh, for about an hour each time. And then on top of that, I actually teach like webinars, live classes. I'm on constantly in the uh, membership. Um, I'm sorry, in the community, responding to questions, uh, helping, you know, helping however I can. So that takes time as well. So that is why I have decided and I've done this. I've been doing this for about a little over a year where I've been really deeply giving um, appointments and contracting other notaries. But I'm just talking about it today. But uh so hopefully, I'm really hoping that, you know, me coming up here and kind of talking to you about this part of the business is going to, you know, help you make either an informed decision of whether to move forward in your notary business or take a step back. Because you definitely don't want to do or get into something that's not going to fulfill you, that's not going to give you any motivation. To me, all the motivation I needed was the fact that I work for myself and uh, my job is flexible enough to I can take off whenever I want to pick up my kids, do whatever I want with my kids and travel. Okay. I'm getting older in age because it, I need to travel. I need to go see things. If I want to get away for like three days, then I'm going to do that because that's important to me. So you do the things that are important to you and decide if it's the right choice. Choice. I'm only here to motivate, guide, instruct, educate, all of those good things. 
if this video brought any kind of value or shed any light on the industry or help you make a choice or decision leave a comment i like to respond i like to engage i want to know what you think okay and stay tuned of course you know i have more co content coming um i am going to be talking about more of uh notary business side of notary i'm going to be talking about you know self-employment getting um like a mortgage i did buy a house for the first time with my notary income uh, a lot of people are like mm, was it because of you know your courses i was like uh no i I bought the house when I you know was a notary and I still am a notary so I'm just excited to share my journey with you guys I'll be also talking about new new home ownership and all the fun things that have gone into purchasing a home as a first-time home buyer um, you know renovating the house I've done a lot of changes already to the house and it's just a fun time uh, I like this channel to be fun and, in, and of course educational so um, thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you at the next video. Happy stamping.